Welcome back to Linux Network. The KDE project has just released a beta version of their upcoming KDE Plasma 6.2 desktop environment. This is a big update, packed with exciting new features and improvements that are designed to enhance your experience on your computer. Though it's still in its testing phase, the final version is expected to be released in early October 2024, but you can try it now if you're feeling adventurous. So, let's break it down. One of the standout features in KDE Plasma 6.2 is the ability to control the brightness of each monitor separately. This is great news for people who use multiple monitors and need each one of them to have different brightness levels. Maybe you have a bright room and want one monitor brighter for better viewing while keeping another dimmer. Now you can easily adjust each screen to your preference without affecting the others. Have you ever been in the middle of watching a movie or waiting for something important only to have your computer decided to go to sleep or lock the screen? KDE Plasma 6.2 introduces a feature that lets you override apps that may block your computer from going to sleep or locking the screen. This is super useful if you're running an app that's not properly telling your system what it's doing, causing the screen to lock or the computer to go to sleep unexpectedly. Wayland is a modern display server protocol that many Linux users have been adopting, and KDE Plasma 6.2 has made significant improvements for people using it. One important feature is the support for the Wayland Color Management Protocol, which ensures that colors are displayed accurately on your screen, especially for users who need precise color rendering for tasks like graphic design or photography. Additionally, KDE Plasma 6.2 now fully supports Sticky Keys in Wayland. Sticky Keys is an accessibility feature that helps people with limited dexterity use keyboard shortcuts by allowing them to press one key at a time instead of needing to press multiple keys simultaneously. This is a big win for making KDE more accessible to a wider range of users. If you're an artist or someone who regularly uses a drawing tablet with your computer, you'll be happy to know that KDE Plasma 6.2 has improved support for drawing tablets. This means your tablet should work more smoothly, with fewer bugs and offer better performance making it easier to use for digital art or note taking. The battery monitor in KDE Plasma 6.2 has also been given a boost. You'll now get more accurate information about your battery life and power consumption. There are even new visual cues for different power profiles, so you can easily tell if your computer is set to a battery saving mode or higher performance mode right from the battery icon. In addition, some other popular widgets like the weather widget and the minimize all widget have also been improved. The weather widget will now be more accurate and the minimize all widgets will quickly clear your screen by minimizing all open windows, will work even better. KDE Plasma's system app, which is where you customize your system's appearance and behavior, has been redesigned in several areas. There are new and easier to use interfaces for settings related to accessibility, keyboard shortcuts and Thunderbolt connections for those who use high-speed Thunderbolt devices. Additionally. KDE Plasma 6.2 has made it so that when you change your system accent color, the color used to highlight menus, windows, etc., it will now automatically adjust based on whether you are using the Breeze Dark Team, a popular dark mode team, or the Breeze Twilight Team, a team that mixes light and dark mode elements. This makes it easier to maintain a consistent and polished look for your desktop. One of the great things about KDE Plasma is how customizable it is. KDE Plasma 6.2 builds on that with several visual enhancements. For example, you'll now hear a sound and you connect or disconnect a screen. There's also a new option to disable the outlines that appear around windows in the page widgets, which is the widget that lets you see and manage your virtual desktops. Another cool addition is the memory page in the info center. This page provides details about your computer's memory usage, which is helpful if you're trying to figure out what's slowing down your system or if you want to optimize performance. Additionally, KDE Plasma 6.2 introduces an alpha modifier protocol in KWIN Windows Manager, which helps in rendering translucent effects more smoothly. If you enjoy visual effects like blurred backgrounds or transparent windows, you'll appreciate this improvement. For those who love to customize their desktop even further, KDE Plasma 6.2 adds support for SFG cursor theming. This means you can use scalable vector graphics, in short SFG, for your mouse cursor, allowing for sharper and more detailed cursors even when you zoom in or use higher resolutions. 
The KDE team has also introduced a new feature that will show users a donation request notification once a year. This will encourage users to support the ongoing development of KDE Plasma, helping the project to continue delivering great updates and improvements. Plasma Discover KDE Graphical App Store and Package Manager has also seen some upgrades. It now supports post-market OS, a Linux-based operating system designed for mobile devices, and offers the ability to shut down your computer after applying an offline system update, making the update process smoother. Discover also now provides more accurate license information for apps and has an improved app review system. KDE Plasma 6.2 also enhances security and networking support for WebAuth, which is useful for SAML-based network authentication, often used in corporate environments. It also adds support for OWE, Enhanced Open Wi-Fi, which is a more secure type of Wi-Fi connection. While the KDE Plasma 6.2 beta is available now for testing, the final stable release is scheduled for October 8, 2024. However, Linux distribution maintainers will get access to the stable version a week earlier on October 3, giving them time to integrate it into their system so that users can start enjoying the new versions as soon as possible. In the meantime, if you're eager to try out KDE Plasma 6.2, you can do so by using the testing edition of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed or KDE Neon. Keep in mind that this is still a beta version, which means there may be bugs or other issues, so it's not recommended for use on production system where stability is crucial. In summary, KDE Plasma 6.2 is shaping up to be a fantastic update with a wide range of improvements that will benefit all types of users. From those looking for better accessibility features to people who love to customize their desktops. Whether you're a digital artist, a developer or just someone who enjoys having control over their desktop environment, KDE Plasma 6.2 has something to offer you. If you're already a KDE fan or simply curious about what this update has to offer, you may want to give the beta a try. Just be prepared for a few bumps along the way as is the case with any pre-release software. And as always, if you find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.